What's up, Valleypreneurs? This is Dan Spotsville, CEO and host. And I'm Michaela Mitchell. If you're a first-time listener uh, in this podcast, we talk about everything business, entrepreneurship, but most importantly, how to kick ass in life. Yes. Welcome to the real episode one of Valiant yes. Premiers. I'm excited. Yes. To those who are new to the show, so we've definitely been filming the podcast for almost a year now, but we've been uh, finally really doing it consistently. So we've been coming into the studio maybe two times a week, sometimes one, but we're filming a lot of episodes and we felt like right now would be a perfect time to, you know, put our brand out there further. That's the whole goal for Valiant Volumes, Valiant Digital for 2024. And right. so that includes putting ourselves onto streaming platforms like yeah. Spotify and Apple Podcasts. So this episode is intended to show those up, those listeners or Valiantpreneurs, that's what we call you, um, mm -hmm. who want to listen from square one. I know I'm a person who likes to go back to the very beginning of a podcast to like learn about who they are and know all the tea of what's happening, all the details. So mm -hmm. that's what this episode is. Um, one thing to point out though, is that you don't have to listen to these episodes sequentially. You can listen to them all over the place, but if you do listen in order, you'll get to learn all the, all the details. Yeah. yeah it's, it's really to give, you know, if you want to know who we are, this, this kind of, this episode will set the tone for that. You know, yeah. we'll talk today about who we are, what we do, services that we offer, things that are happening, um, our focus as an agency, how we position ourselves in the marketplace, amongst many other things yeah. that you shared with me, um, you know, the last couple of days on why we want to uh, shoot this volume. So yeah. um, I'm excited today I think to it's talk through it. Yeah, for sure. I think it's important to just have that that starter episode for anyone who just wants to know mm -hmm. what to expect for the episode. Okay, well, let's get podcast. into it. Okay, for sure. So, I mean... Number one, I already said that we do call our listeners Valiantpreneurs. Do you want to touch on why we call them Valiantpreneurs? Because yeah. who we're trying to target with, mm -hmm. the, with the podcast? Yeah, I'll start from the very beginning and I'll keep it super short. So Valiant is spelled not the right way. <laughs> okay. It's supposed to be spelled V-A-L-I-A-N-T, but we spelled it V-A-L-Y-N-T. And the reason is the correct spelling was just taken. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so we just, we changed the I-A to a Y. That's all we did. Um, now, where does it stem from? When when the when I initially started this agency, I had like five other partners uh, since which I've bought out. So like mm -hmm. I own one hundred percent of Valiant uh, Digital. I was, I was about to say Valiant <laughs> Volumes, <laughs> um, but look, I bought everybody else out. But during the time when we were coming up with a name, uh, let me backtrack a little bit more. I had an agency called Lift Media Social. Uh, I got some investment, so that's why I had partners. Um, but during that session with the partners, we were like, Hey, what do we want to call it? Um, and you know, one of the partners said, Hey, like it took you a lot of courage to get to this point in life. Why don't we call it Valiant, you know, Valiant digital. Mm -hmm. And they were like, Hey, it suits you. I was like, Oh, cool. And then there, and we stuck with it. So like, and for the meaning of the agency, um, I really do take this to heart. Like it takes a lot of courage for our Valiant printers to go out there and, you know, go follow their dreams and the goals that they've set for themselves. Cause it takes a lot of courage to get out of bed every day and go tackle the world. Right. Yeah. Um, it takes a lot of courage for our clients to trust us in what it is that we do here, um, at Valiant Digital. And the third thing for our team members, it takes a lot of courage to be yourself, which we encourage here at Valiant Digital. So it, it kind of really like, um, encompasses everything that we do. It stems from courage. Yeah. So. I, I mean, it, it just so happens that to use the term be valiant it just yeah. works it sounds mm -hmm. good and valiant yeah. preneur one day i remember i don't even it's remember. a courageous entrepreneur yeah, yeah. so mm -hmm. our valiant preneurs those who are listening like it's anyone from a business owner to somebody who is an entrepreneur wants to be an entrepreneur or entrepreneur or entrepreneur which you can explain the difference but then additionally uh college students because there's a lot like I mean, we talk about this in a lot of our episodes, so, you know, stay tuned for the college discussions, but like just being in college is such a unique place because you have to, it takes a lot of courage mm -hmm. to actually decide what you want to do or what path you want to go on and, right. and to put yourself out in the world. So, yeah, uh, for sure. I know entrepreneurs will get a lot out of it. Um, entrepreneurs, like people that are within organizations, whether it's startups or even like, you know, your, your bigger organizations, right? Um, there's a lot of entrepreneurs that work in these type of places and entrepreneurs are people that look at the business like an entrepreneur, but they just so happen to not maybe own the business, you know, maybe mm -hmm. they're higher up. Um, so, you know, that's what I kind of define as an entrepreneur. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. Um, let's jump into who, a little bit about who we are so we can start diving into then like Valiant Digital, Valiant Volumes, um, all of that right there. So Valiant yeah. Digital, for those who don't know yet, Valiant Digital is the digital marketing agency that 
you are the CEO and founder of that mm -hmm. I do work for and I have for the last three and a half years. Mm -hmm. um, Valiant Volumes is the podcast that we've created to be underneath the Valiant Digital Umbrella. And there's a lot of ideas that we have for like the <laughs> yeah. future of not only the podcast but the agency mm -hmm. including like the software we just launched so there's a mm -hmm. lot of details but mm -hmm. when we talk about valiant digital that's the the digital marketing agency that's valiant volumes is our podcast mm -hmm. um and luna is our software yes and your dog yes yes both <laughs> we'll get into it yeah. um okay so what are three things that you would say about yourself so the valiant preneurs can get a little insight onto who you are mm -hmm. before we dive into what it is the agency and does yeah, well, I want to flip it back to you oh, first. Okay. Um, tell us, like, you know, tell the listeners, like, your background and then, you know, what you have been doing here at the agency the last three and a half years. Okay. Um, so my name is Michaela Mitchell. <laughs> Everyone <laughs> okay. calls me Mac, and I love that everyone calls me Mac these days. Like, it feels cool to have a nickname, to be honest. Um, mm. And so I – Texas is home. I love to travel. And – I graduated from the University of North Texas, which is so cool because we, Dan and I, got to speak at UNT uh, in front of two marketing classes just recently. And that's going to be like a thing that we continue to do. Every so quarter. How cool. Like I didn't appreciate college when I was there, but now looking back, I'm like, dang, how cool is it that I get to speak at my university? <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah, that is a cool thing. Um, yeah. but other things about me. So my journey with Valiant, um, I worked in the bar for a very long time moment I turned 18 I was behind the bar so I learned a lot about customer service and that's like really where like my background comes from when it comes to like courting um like the leads that we had when I was in sales or just like getting to know people I learned so much studying psychology being behind a bar learning a lot about people uh, and life experiences there and so then when I started with Valiant three and a half years ago I just happened to have a bar regular of mine who worked for you at the time mm -hmm. contact me and say hey it's the middle of COVID what are you doing? I was in a recruiting job. Wasn't necessarily happy just because I didn't know what I was supposed to be doing. So it didn't feel right. right. So I trusted him. I trusted you to come do sales for digital marketing agency, mm -hmm. which I didn't know anything about. Uh, and I was supposed to be sales for churches because <laughs> at the time, yeah. Valiant, from my understanding then, Valiant was a digital marketing agency that helped like churches and nonprofits um, gain awareness. Yeah, we've evolved since then. We're so in capital much. raise now. Yes. Just so, just so the <laughs> listeners know, we don't. We have some legacy church uh, partners, but yeah. yeah, we don't. We have like one or two on the roster. Everybody yeah. else is capital raise, lead generation, big organizations. You know. Yeah, so, it was yeah. like four weeks after I started, and I finally felt like, dang, I have my footing. Like I can speak to digital marketing for churches. There was some internal changes of like the sales team, and that's when you and your partner at the time said, hey. Now figure out how to sell capital raises, like it's digital marketing to capital raises, right? To mm -hmm. clients looking to connect with investors, which is the the niche that we like dialed into, mm -hmm. really figured out, and like, we excel at it. Yeah, it's really mm -hmm. cool. Um, yeah. To to finish my sales journey, I remember having a conversation with you that you said, "Hey, you know, if sales isn't your thing." what do you want to do? If you can be pro Valiant, let's find the right place for you within the agency. So that included, you know, doing some project management, um, dabbled with the idea of what does a client success role look like for Valiant, um, trying to just figure out where I really mm. enjoyed it the most and could thrive. And most recently, that's been in a position where we're focused on branding for Valiant. So mm. I've done everything within the agency except actually build the ads. I feel like I've had a hand in everything. Yeah, you did operations. You Like, that's yeah. a huge part of where you contributed. So um, you did a lot here. Yeah. You know, you did, like, to, been... to everything you said, you did everything but build the campaigns. I yeah. mean, you, you wrote copy. Yeah. You created <laughs> graphics, like, you know, vendor, communication, video production. Yeah. Like, I mean, you've done it all here. I genuinely would have never said I want to be an entrepreneur, feel like I'm an entrepreneur until like mm -hmm. the last couple of years when I've really been put in a position that an entrepreneur starting their own business would be in. Like, obviously I didn't start Valiant, you did, but mm -hmm. being like alongside you the whole way, just figuring yeah. out all the little nuances, finding the right team members. I mean, you name it. Mm -hmm. I got oh, to yeah, see you did a all lot of, of recruiting. that firsthand. Yeah. Yeah. The, I mean, all the recent like team members that came on board, like five of them, and then we got three more coming. I mean, you, you helped recruit those people. So yeah. like, like, 
you've done it all, you know, yeah. and I think it's okay. Not I think it is. I mean, you are an entrepreneur. Like you're a good example of what an entrepreneur is. Mm, so they look like they're all shapes and sizes. I mean, yeah. they come from all different backgrounds. So mm -hmm. I'm living it in real time. Yeah. I mean, it's not like you have work, like set work hours or anything like that. You show up whenever the hell you feel like it. <laughs> which is early in the morning <laughs> yeah yeah um dan yeah. i'm there with you as actually one of the um nathan one of the new guys uh -huh. asked me when mm -hmm. you were out of the room he said mac when do you come to the office because the mm -hmm. team knows it's you know one to two days a week when everyone's there when mm -hmm. you're in training you might be required to be there more yeah. and my answer was just simply if dan's in the office i'm in the office and he didn't necessarily look confused, but you could tell he wanted to understand more. And I shared mm -hmm. with him, I said, look, if I want to get one-on-one -on -one time with my boss, mm -hmm. I know that it's better for me to be there. He's yeah. got a hundred million things going on, which like we can all observe when we're in the office with you. <laughs> yeah. But like, if I want to get your attention for even a split second to just mm -hmm. get an approval, like that's where I'm going to get, be the most efficient. Yeah. And so Makes like, sense. no one, you don't have to do it that way, but that's what I do. Makes so. sense. So, yeah. Deal. Well, thanks for sharing your background. Yeah. Now, what would you mm -hmm. add for yourself? For myself, um, I won't go like super in depth, but, um, you know, I grew up in Japan. Uh, I was born and raised in Okinawa, Japan. I was there for 18 years, pretty much half of my life. Uh, I speak fluent Japanese. Um, you know, I've always been an entrepreneur, um, you know, even in like, my early 20s like you know i started different businesses i think when i was like 21 22 they all failed obviously uh but you know through failure like i learned a lot um from those mistakes and failures and um i think i was like 24 like i decided to to get back into the workforce go to like a startup in the virgin islands and i ended up being there you know i signed up to do a year but ended up running like retail stores for a telecommunication company for about five years had a bunch of people underneath me learned a lot about building a business growing revenue, um, you know, leading a team, multiple teams on different islands. Um, so, I, so I learned a lot and, you know, my, my background is strong in, in sales too. I mean, I've made like president's cabinet at, at Verizon, you know, back in like 2009. I mean, it's been, it's been a while, but like, you know, being in top 1% out of thousands of like, um, salespeople, I've had those accomplishments along the way, um, having like the best customer service on the island. You know, I've been able to, to do those type of things and accomplish that. Um, so yeah, like I've, I've always just kind of wanted to do my own thing and I've always had a, a, a thing for like video production. So like when I was in the Virgin Islands, you know, um, I decided, yes, I'm working my way up, you know, making good money, whatever. Uh, but I was like, I want to start a, a digital marketing agency and, you know, I just saw a need in the marketplace for owners like myself that just couldn't afford traditional marketing at the time when this is like what eight years ago um, and digital marketing at the time was only being used by like 33 percent of companies uh, now i think that number is up you know from 33 percent, obviously because it's been eight years but at the time there was a lot of opportunity there still is a lot of opportunity you know things are changing with like ai integration and ai is like the new thing you know mm -hmm. for for marketers so uh, stay tuned for that conversation but um, I don't know. Like I've, I've just had an opportunity to, to do my thing. I, I think I planned well, like in my mid twenties, um, I knew I had to go work, say I saved up a bunch of money during my mid twenties. Um, and then I took that leap to start lift media, which now is Valiant digital. Uh, you know, and, and I started this agency for the right reason, which is to, to create this playground, which we're getting close to. It's you becoming know. such a reality. Like, yeah. The, this, uh -huh. I, you, you say that all the time. Like mm -hmm. you wanted to create a playground for creatives to come and yes. be themselves and be creative. And like mm -hmm. whenever you would preach that, like mm -hmm. I have this vision in my head of what that what that looks like yep. I'm like okay like yeah i get the analogy right mm -hmm. but now but like literally a playground <laughs> yeah but now literally like because of the yeah. office that we've mm -hmm. like renovated and the office that we're like searching for right mm -hmm. now like I've, a huge like twenty thousand square foot kind of like office you know like to where you can put a basketball court in there like can we drop the reference Oh, like Fantasy Factory? Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. I didn't know if that was going to yeah. spoil I didn't, your I didn't realize, like, that was, like, what I was trying to build. And, like, it was just recently that I saw a TV show of Rob Deerdick, which, uh, you know, um, I think he's a great guy. And, he, and he's changed a lot since I've watched Fantasy Factory. Mm -hmm. But uh, being able to create 
you know, a place like that for a digital agency, like, um, it's, it's very similar to that, that type of vibe that I've been striving for the last couple of years. So, um, like you're saying, like it's becoming a reality and now we're looking for a space and we have the team members, we have different services that we're offering, which we'll kind of get into today. So the listeners know like what our core business model is, you know, mm -hmm. and how we brought it to where it's at today. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's just exciting times. It's, it's, I think it's cool for me to see that how, you know, I started this agency by myself. I think I should share this. Mm -hmm. I started this with, you know, on my own. So I did the video shoots. I, I bought like a $300 Canon camera from like Best Buy. So I did video production for churches. So like, you know, I would charge them like 300 bucks, go shoot the video, edit the video. But then within that $300, I would write the copy. I w and there's no AI, by the way, <laughs> yeah. eight, you know, eight years ago, I'd write the copy. I'd create the graphics. Um, I'd build the ads inside of Meta and Instagram or Google AdWords. I'd launch the ads. Um, I'd build them. You know, so like I, and I, I even sometimes made landing pages. Oh. <laughs> so I did it all for like $300 or like sometimes like 500 bucks. So that's my starting point with this agency is I did it all. So I played everybody's position. I mean, mm -hmm. obviously I had to sell it too. So I did sales. Um, so I did it all. And again, to, to what I was saying earlier, you know, I landed a client that paid me, I think it was like 4,000 a month. I went in there with like a like a tie and a vest and stuff, mm -hmm. sweating, no hat. I mean, I was just not myself. But anyways, like I was pitching them like 8K. I remember exactly how much I pitched them. I was like $8,000. And I pretended like I had a whole team behind me, right? Yeah. And they're like, well, mm. and they said, what about, so like a couple of days pass. Um, and they're like, what about half of that for 4,000? I was like, 4,000 a month? <laughs> yeah. I can get rid of these $500 and like not get rid of them. But like, yeah. For the same amount of work, I was like four thousand. Like it was a huge moment for me um, to land a client at four k a month, and I did everything in my power to to keep it. And I ended up, you know, those people ended up investing into the agency and into me. So uh, that's kind of where like things like took off because I got like the money to be able to go hire people and stuff. Um, but yeah, it, it was that's where it all kind of jump started. And you know, the journey of the last six years. I mean. You know, we weren't from, you know, a lot of different team members like contributed to us. Mm -hmm. um, we've changed the niche that we focus on, which, you know, it used to be churches and like everybody. I think like when you start an agency, you work with everybody. Like, so we work with dental offices, law firms, plumbing. like yeah, plumbing, uh, weight loss, like, you know, programs and stuff like Vitamins. that. Like, yeah, <laughs> we've vetted a lot yeah, of weird ones. Yeah, weird, yeah. Just mm -hmm. different. So now we're focused on capital raise and within the capital raise, you know, it's reg A, reg D, reg C, A, F, people that are in the seed round, series A to D. Um, and looking to raise anywhere from like 2 million all the way to like half a billion dollars. Um, and you know, we have a huge database of people that we can target millions of accredited investors. Right. Um, and we are full service agency to where we do the copywriting. We have a team that does copywriting, graphic design. We do a video production at a very high level as studios with the makeup artists, you know, the whole, yeah. the whole shebang, the whole shebang. shebang. Yeah. yeah. So um, like mm -hmm. one thing, uh, that we ran into a lot early on. Mm -hmm. I don't know if Jagger deals with it all that much like to date. Maybe there's other things, but like mm -hmm. there's really no parameters to call yourself a digital marketer. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and you were just going into like some of the things that we do offer. Like what mm -hmm. would you say to those listeners? Like how do we define ourselves to make us different than like other digital marketers yeah. or digital marketing agencies? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's just d digital marketing agency. There's so many different types. And then, then if you start talking about PR agencies, like they're the services start to kind of like, like clash or like, you know, like lap of yeah, like overlap. Yeah. Overlap, you know, start to overlap and like traditional agencies doing digital marketing. But, um, all that said, like we're truly a digital marketing agency. The services that we offer, the core services mm -hmm. are content creation. So like, you know, the graphics, the copywriting, video production, um, and we do paid advertising on digital platforms. So we have the capability to run ads on, Every major TV network through CCTV, native and display ads, search ads, uh, social media ads on like LinkedIn, Meta, you know, YouTube, TikTok, you name it. And then we have the capability to run ads on every app and website that's out there. Mm -hmm. um, in addition to that, we do support our, you know, partners and clients with uh, automated uh, email marketing, text messaging, automated LinkedIn outreach 
all through our own software called Luna AI, which has AI technology that's inserted into the software that alleviates all of the heavy lifting on follow-up processes for sales and lead generation engagement. And even the inbound, if we do generate the leads, there's an automation AI that talks with the potential prospect um, and gets them to book time on the on the client's calendar. Um, and within the software, you know, there's a billion users that we in, inserted in, in there. So from every company, everybody that's on LinkedIn, is in this software, mm -hmm. like 700 million people or something like that. Plus we add our own software, I mean, our own data that we have access to into this software. So there's over a billion people, B2C and B2B people that our clients can get in touch with. And we are a data company, um, you know, because we have access to like hundreds of millions of like profiles. Uh, but then now we've, we've evolved into a full service digital marketing agency that also offers software as a surface, a SaaS company. So like, um, we're at a point to where we're just, you know, we had the core service that we were offering and we're starting to tentacle out and we're bringing all these different team members, you know, um, we have a lot of team members now. So, and we're like, we're like hiring three more again and we're going to just continue to like build on this block that we've been, you know, like putting together one at a time. So will you uh, mm -hmm. share with the next three positions are that we want to hire? Yeah. Uh, one is sales, obviously, you know, um, if you're a valiant preneur listening, you need sales. It doesn't matter who you are. Sales equals revenue. Sales allows you to take the money and put it back into your business and do a lot of things. So we're hiring for a sales position. Um, we're also hiring for another, uh, digital marketer because we truly build everything. We do it all in house. Um, that's one of the most important parts of it, right? Like building the software out for our clients, the automation software that has AI tech built into it. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then the paid advertising stuff. So we do, I say we do about like 80 to 80, uh, 80 to 90% of most of the stuff. It just depends sometimes, but in house, like our team is like here in the, in the U.S., here in Dallas, Texas, you like meet us in an office twice yeah, a week. Can, yeah, you can come to the office. I mean, we have a real agency here. We don't outsource like stuff like some of these other people, and there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, but the third one we're hiring right now. Drum roll, uh, please. <laughs> uh, we're hiring a comedian. Like a comedian. <laughs> yeah. Tell me more. <laughs> Serious. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, look, I tend to think I like to do things like outside of the box, uh, but there's a reason. Look, I have a love for comedians. Um, and like, if you scroll through my news feed, there's a lot of like comedians, like I follow and I see a lot of comedic stuff on my, on my, on my feed here. Um, but look, we we're at a point of where we're building our brand this year. Um, so, you know, part of the thing is, you know, we have a partnership with FC Dallas as a partner. We're working with the city of Frisco. We're part of a chamber now, city of Frisco chamber, shout out to them again. Um, so we're building these partnerships and brand building, but simultaneously what we've lacked on for this point, we built the business to millions of dollars a year, but what we didn't do really is like post on social media. So I figured why not bring a comedian, um, you yeah, know, I mean, somebody who's not just good. Like when we posted content creator, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, so somebody that can create content. I found a lot of them were actually people who were behind the camera. The one that offered the ideas, but they were, they were camera shy. And so right. the idea with the comedian is that this is somebody who it wants to be it's in good front on, of get on the, get on their feet. Yep. They want to be on camera. Mm -hmm. They're pretty, they're usually charismatic. Like people are drawn to them or they, they're witty. Is that the right? Yeah. Word? That's a good one. So yeah. there's just a lot of qualities that somebody who is aspiring to be a comedian mm -hmm. um, or just has that type of personality mm -hmm. would be good at for the type of content that we're wanting to create. So it's not just somebody managing our social pages and offering ideas. They truly are like facilitating the whole, yes. the whole bit yeah. from start to finish yep. with the perk of Valiance, uh, happy to help them edit some of their content yeah. when they come on. As yeah. A and the reason why we're editing the video. So like some of these people that we're interviewing right now, they actually do stand up at like the laugh factory or like yeah. the improv and like some of these, like, uh, places throughout like yeah. Dallas, Fort Worth. Um, look, one of the things that we, I don't know if pride is the right word, but the, one of the things that we make sure we do for all of our team members that come on board is look, Valiant Digital has goals, right? Mm -hmm. We have goals and we write our goals down every year. But one thing is like, we don't bring on team members if their, if their personal goals don't align with Valiant Digital's goals. What, what I mean by that is like Valiant Digital has this big goal. And within that, all of our team members currently can realize their dreams and their personal goals. I'm not saying everything, but quite a, quite a bit of it through working here at Valiant Digital. And it's no different for a comedian, right? 
uh, as a person, if we do hire, like, let's just say this gentleman or this lady that we talk to, um, and you know, they're already doing standups. One of the things that we're going to offer is editing their, their stuff. One of the pain points for a comedian is having one, when they're trying to start off, like, it's not like they're making a shit ton of money. And then two, like, it's hard for them to put out content. So what we're going to do is like, Hey, you're going to get paid to create our content, mm -hmm. but also take some of your time to create your content for your stuff. But we're going to give you the resources, like the editors, the copywriters, all the tools and resources. So you can blow up your you know, personal brand. And I'm okay with that because like if they achieve their goals, trust me, like it's only going to help Valiant Digital out. Like it's a win-win mm -hmm. situation. So what we try to create here for our team members is a win-win situation. And that's the type of culture, like that's part of the culture of what yeah. we have at Valiant Digital. Hell yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you for explaining that further. Yeah. Um, okay. So I want to go back to Valiant Digital. So we gave mm -hmm. a, a pretty high level overview of like Valiant as a digital marketing agency. Mm -hmm. I want to just define a couple of things really quick. Sure. Um, when we talk about like traditional marketing, what we mm -hmm. mean by that is traditional marketing is typically like uh, paper. So you have the mailers that you have going out. We're talking about billboards, radio. So when we talk about digital marketing rather than traditional, that's the big difference there to pay mm -hmm. attention to. Uh, your digital marketing is going to be on your computer, your phone, your TV. I mean, any of the ads that you wonder, mm -hmm. how do they know that mm -hmm. I want that? That's exactly yeah. what we do for our clients. So when you've been shopping for shoes and you didn't buy them, for, you put them in your cart, but you never checked out that same type of methodology, whenever you're now browsing for the weather or mm -hmm. you're on your t t your smart TV and you see a shoe advertisement, that's the same methodology that like we're putting forth for ourselves for digital marketing, but then yep. for our clients as well. So I wanted to define that. And I feel like there's one other one that, mm -hmm. oh, organic posting versus paid. And so mm -hmm. the paid advertising piece of it, um, we say that we create content for our clients and we do the paid advertising. But one big difference to point out is that we don't do organic posting for our clients. Mm -hmm. um, no, no, we don't. Right. No. And so mm -hmm. organic posting, just so that the value entrepreneurs know moving forward what that means to us. Mm -hmm. It's whenever you're sitting there manually, like posting on your Facebook page or posting on your LinkedIn, like mm -hmm. that manual effort right there is the organic posting. We're doing the paid effort. Correct. Um, yeah. I just wanted to make sure that those, those terms were defined mm -hmm. so that everyone knows moving forward. Right. Next, I want us to go into more about just capital raise and Luna so we can mm -hmm. share like the unique case studies there. Is there yeah. one you want to start with? Yeah. I'd rather start with the software really okay. quick. Yeah. So, so, so Luna AI, um, you know, if I give you high level what it does, um, you know, if, if you're on LinkedIn all the time and a lot of businesses are in, in a lot of different verticals, um, it saves you time because within the software, um, we can set, there's 700 million or a billion users in there all from LinkedIn plus R. So that's why I say it's a billion uh, B2B and B2C profiles within that software. So what you're able to do is connect with those individuals, um, one via LinkedIn automatically, cause you can set it to to target, let's say, you know, you, you create a profile within the software and say you want to target, um, I don't know, CEOs that are in the tech space. Mm -hmm. You can target those people and then you can filter them by the amount of employees that they have and about how much revenue they're doing and location. And then you, you can connect your LinkedIn profile to it and it'll automatically send a connection request. But not only that, once it connects to them, um, it'll start sending, uh, we know what the prompt that we put in there, whatever you want to talk about the messaging, mm -hmm. it'll make sure that it's very tailored to that individual. So like, let's say you're the individual, you're a CEO of a tech company. Um, and let's say I'm using my profile, it'll reach out to you, but it'll say, Hey, it'll read your profile, like your LinkedIn profile and some of these other things. Um, and if you recently went to Europe or something, and then you work with, let's say Netflix, it'll say, Hey Matt, see that you've been with Netflix for like two and a half years. How's that going? That's amazing. Congrats. I'm, I'm moving up. You just got a promotion. So it'll talk about the promotion. It'll also say, Hey, I just saw that you went to Europe. How was that? Um, uh, by the way, and it inserts the prompt that, that you wanted to talk to. So it's customized every messaging. Um, so that's one aspect of the software. Um, the other part is, um, you know, it will send out AI driven email messages as well. Uh, AI driven text messages. Um, so that's the outbound part of it. Um, and then if you're already generating leads for yourself, when the leads do come in, it can send AI driven emails, texts, um, and then what we call voice drops, which is a 20 to 45 seconds message that you can pre-record and it'll insert it into their cell phone automatically. So like it's an all in one software for not only capital raise, but anybody that's looking to connect with certain professionals online, uh, for B2B, uh, to be able to sell your product or service, 
But then also, if you want to target B two C people, our database is in in the software as well too. So you can target people via email, text messages, phone calls. Um, so I mean, it just does, yeah. it does it all. But and the AI tech is is attached to it. So like it's the software can be used for any vertical. So like a bakery, for finance, for banking, um, for real estate. Uh, you know, energy. Um, you know, I mean, I'm excited retail about the, stores. Yeah, I'm excited about the possibility for like something associated with travel. Maybe there's oh, travel, travel consultants agencies, or recruiters yeah. that can mm-hmm. help facilitate that type yeah. of conversation. So. Consultants for sure too. Yeah. Um, so that's that's in a nutshell the software. We just launched it. Um, you know, we've we've built this. Like I'm saying, we're building a brand. But like you know, this week is the first week that we actually launched the software. Within four days, we had over 300 companies respond. Yeah, just from a just from like three or four emails and like three or four text messages. Yeah. So, I mean, quickly we're getting people to sign up um, and we're limiting it right now just because we want to make sure the build is quality uh, for the people that are signing up. So, yeah, yeah. thanks if, for asking. Yeah, if mm-hmm. Luna is something that the Valleypreneurs are interested in list hearing more about, we do have at least two other episodes where we've gone much more into depth about what Luna offers the industries and like the use cases. So check out either... I know there's one in February and there is a March episode too. Mm-hmm. So it talks. Yeah. I think the title has like Luna AI software or yeah. something like that. And there's some like shorts and stuff that we're putting out. Mm-hmm. Um, and look, I haven't even put it on our website really yet as a mm-hmm. dedicated page because I don't want too many people coming up to sign up for yeah. the software just yet. We're definitely, mm-hmm. what is the term? It's like, we're just not we're damage not. control, but we're like managing, um, the flow of the, yeah. of the build, right? We're like in phase one. We're only, we, initially offered it to our internal clients that has a full service digital marketing, you know, agreements with us. So we launched it to those people. We've mm-hmm. got those people set up with the software. We then launched it. The phase two part of it is launching it to people that we spoken with that maybe couldn't afford our services um, or just wasn't ready just yet. So we reached out to those and those are the, and out of those 1500, that's where 300 plus, like, you know, a fifth of those company responded. And we continue to get people responding. Like Jagger's calendar is yeah. booked out weeks. And I'm talking like, five to six seven a day and then you got nick so i mean we're probably talking to like 10 different companies minimum a day about this software and about 30 to 50 percent are signing up for it so yeah and Mm -hmm. i wanted to make just a quick comment on like what it is that we do for like the capital raise piece of it because it does apply to the people that we've been reaching out to for the Mm -hmm. software but then i want to spend the rest of the episode kind of talking more about what you can expect with valiant volumes so yeah um so the capital raise piece of it like yes our clients uh, i mean we talk about this a lot in the episode so Mm -hmm. i don't want to sound like a broken record but Mm -hmm. uh, the clients that we are connecting with and that we're targeting for for ourselves are all clients that are looking to raise capital and so if you've ever seen shark tank that's a great look into what it is that we do but the truth is when you work with valiant digital to raise capital to connect with investors you don't have to go the shark route you don't have to Mm -hmm. just connect with that one big shark who can be your investor with our digital marketing i mean it's lead generation so we're putting you in front of the right investors based on what it is that you're looking to accomplish so through that data that you've touched on you know we're able to target them based on their income like if they've recently invested online i mean you name it and so Mm -hmm. that's really become our bread and butter and now that we've figured out our footing there and we've been able to show success and the results to those capital raise clients now we have this big focus on being a software company yeah uh, and that's like the new thing that we're really becoming experts at mm-hmm. along with the video production yeah so. so i say a core or core business right now has been working with companies in different industries you know we've worked with uh companies in healthcare like mm-hmm. that have apps that are coming out um you know with ai tech we have real estate clients fractional uh, jet ownership yeah uh energy companies um, you know, companies were building a golf course out in Italy. Uh, yeah. I mean, we have like just a diverse set of clients that we're working with, but again, to the point that you're making, the main goal is we're helping them raise capital through the robust database, which continues to grow. So I'm going to keep the old numbers here, but we do have access to 10 million plus accredited investors, 40 million plus, uh, you know, retail investors. And if you combine venture capital, private equity and family offices, we have over 150,000 contacts for those for the investment firms too and that number is going i think honestly like accredited investors um like you can add another seven figures to it because of the date the new data access because we Uh continue to get data we're a very data driven agency every decision that we make on ads are based on data and the kpis key performance indicators that we're looking at so yeah. yeah 
Thank you for sharing mm-hmm. that. Yep. Um, so with just with the time we have left, I do want to make sure mm-hmm. that we really share why Valiant Volumes and like what to expect outside of yeah. just Valiant Digital mm-hmm. and sure. Luna AI. Yep. Um, and so some of the things that we do highlight in this podcast, you know, mm-hmm. it's building a successful agency. Mm-hmm. We want to give the look into agency life because mm-hmm. I've learned that it's very different from corporate life, you know, working mm-hmm. for a corporate um, organization. And I think with the the content creator comedian that we're going to bring on, that's going to give people an even cl- like more in-depth look at what it is to mm-hmm. work at an agency. And how we operate day to day. Yeah, definitely. Um, another another reason to listen or thing that we highlight here is, you know, being an entrepreneur. What is that like? The yes. fun times, the hard times, mm. your experience. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's a lot of that. We do have our hello at Valiant Digital email. So any Valiant preneurs who are listening can mm-hmm. actually like write into us, whether it be yeah. through the email comment on like our posts and let us yeah. know what you want to hear specifically about those things. Right. Um, Cause if there are questions you have about being an agency owner, being an entrepreneur, like entrepreneur, we want to like mm-hmm. be able to share our experiences and hear what you're going through as well, because there's a lot of tips and tricks and we've learned this and we've been burned by that. So maybe mm-hmm. you don't have to. Um, yeah. You can add there. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's a lot uh, I want to add here actually. Okay. Uh, so if you're an entrepreneur or valiantpreneur is what we call you guys mm-hmm. um, and ladies, um, if you're a valiantpreneur trying to build your business, whether you're a one person team or five or 10 or 20 or 30, um, you'll get value out of this because like we do talk about marketing taxes that are actually raising tens and hundreds of millions of dollars, you know, um, and we also talk about lead generation and how we, the type of campaigns that we run, the the software and the tech that we're using to be able to do it. Um, so you'll gain some insight on how, uh, you know, maybe you have your internal marketing team, how like some of the softwares they should be using or considering, or maybe some of the strategies that they should be using. So we talk about those kind of things. So you'll gain insight there. Um, you'll also hear about like daily habits and mm-hmm. tactics that we implement not only personally, but with the team. So like, for example, we just recently talked about the top five and how the top five and being able to have a top five on a day-to-day basis. And Andy Frizzella talks about this quite a bit. I've been doing it for a while. I just never put a thing like a, a name on it, but having, you know, structuring your day and having a top five and getting those tasks done and how that can affect and have a, a positive impact on your, um, you know, the goals that you have set for yourself. So, yeah. Um, those are things that I think we touch on for, uh, entrepreneurs. And even if you're not an entrepreneur and you're an entrepreneur, um, or you're just, you know, a person that has a great career, um, you'll take something away from it. I think for, for people that are not like, you know, trying to find their footing in their career and maybe they're still in college or they're deciding what they want to do. I think this volume and this podcast is going to allow you to see what an agency life is like. Mm-hmm. Um, you'll hear, you know, some of my experiences and yours on how I landed clients and how I landed the jobs that I've wanted to get to this point to learn from those experiences. So like you'll learn a lot about our, both of our experiences and the guests that we have. So I think we mm-hmm. didn't touch on that. We do have, um, guests on here that are very successful in their own way. Um, uh, obviously most of our guests, or at least the guests that we've had are, are solopreneurs or entrepreneurs that's doing like millions of dollars. Um, and we're going to have a lot of different people on here, you know, starting this year. So I think that could be very attractive for you to hear from other people that are successful in different industries. Um, and obviously I'm going to have a comedian on here too. So uh, (laughs) I just want to get into that space, Uh, but we'll, we'll try to do our best to get a diverse, you know, I mean, the diverse people here the three pod the three guests that we've had today Mm -hmm. you know when we're having this conversation um a business owner who has a a fitness organization you know Mm -hmm. that has a very um particular clientele that they're focused on you know then Mm -hmm. we have uh one of your colleagues who's in oil and gas and minerals and Mm -hmm. um has a laundry list of organizations that he's you know worked he with or started sold. just like you so mm-hmm. there's a lot of synergy in that conversation and then we had joel our videographer yeah. who is working on i mean he's made incredible progress since we first talked to him on the show mm-hmm. we'll have to have him back but he's he's a creative at heart he does the videography he's creating documentaries so mm-hmm. there's other creatives that i want to bring on like our one of our hair and makeup uh gr- woman mm-hmm. woman this like, that's like, come out like everyday yeah. entrepreneurs that doesn't get the the limelight that they deserve yeah we try to bring them on here too so that they can talk about their journey and how they got to where they are yeah. which i think will be like important for a lot of people to to understand because like 
because of what you know, like mainstream media highlights is just the point zero zero one percent, not even the top one percent, like the point zero zero one percent. And I think people get like, um, like they don't see the reality of how things actually are. And and you know, my goal with this, you know, volume two is to make sure, like, you know, entrepreneurship is not fucking easy. Yeah. Like, it's not easy to get to where you want to go. And there's a lot of challenges that you got to overcome. So, like. Like I said, if you're in the midst of that, I think you'll gain a lot of insight from our conversations. Yeah. One thing I'll add too mm -hmm. is that one of I got a message from one of our Valiantpreneurs who's been listening since like our, our true day one. And they had sent oh, yeah? a message saying mm -hmm. that they were they loved listening to that to the podcast, mm -hmm. but like they they aren't an entrepreneur. They mm -hmm. don't have a business. They've never had a business. They've pretty much gone the traditional route when it comes to mm -hmm. you know getting married, having kids, and working yeah. your nine to five. Nothing but, wrong with that. No, nothing wrong mm -hmm. with that. Um, but they found the podcast so helpful because we mentioned things like the top five, the productivity, the goal setting, the like wanting to be better for who you are and like mm -hmm. whatever situation you're in. So even though we say like college students or entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs, like we use all those terms of people in certain situations, but like mm. you don't have to be someone like that because we do talk yeah. about things that apply to the day to day. We mm -hmm. talk about customer service experiences and like what yeah. we would do better for a business. And mm -hmm. the future for this podcast is we have some, some little segments that we want to talk about, about success and some of the BS that comes with that or mm -hmm. um, talking about, themes in marketing maybe it's maybe it's decades maybe it's companies yeah. i mean how was marketing in the 90s and yeah. early 2000s and like i have all these things i want to do this year with the volume so um mm -hmm. we'll have some exciting stuff yeah um, i really do think um that's coming you know mm -hmm. uh from here on out so we got yeah. we got big goals yeah i do mm -hmm. want to end it on this one little nugget that mm -hmm. you've shared with me about valiant being in like the, the number one percent and like that um the number oh, top one percent. Yeah, that of one. Like businesses. Yeah. Sure. That, oh, that data point. That? Yeah. Can uh -huh. you do that to close it out? Yeah. Um. I'm. I'm definitely happy to do that. So, um, this applies to just life in general. Okay. Um. You know, because like we're are, we have a culture of like that's driven to like when, you know, mm -hmm. like it doesn't matter. Like if if that doesn't resonate with you, it's okay. But like we have a culture of like fucking winning. And what that means is like not for ourselves only, but for like our team members and our clients. And winning is defined differently for a lot of different people. Um, and success is defined differently for a lot of different people. So uh, when I say win, I'm talking about winning for that individual or that organization uh, the way they want to win in life. So that's, that's a thing here at Valiant Digital. Mm -hmm. All that said, um, people need to realize that uh, – being in the top 1% of any field is very difficult. Like getting into like, let me just start from like sports, like getting into sports. I mean, a small percentage of like high schoolers get to go to, you know, division one, like basketball or football or insert, you know, the sport. Right. Um, and then another one to 2% from that only get to go to the actual like NBA or NFL. Mm -hmm. Right. So take that as a, a comparison to what I'm about to share, share in business. It is no different in business. Out of a million businesses that start every year, only 0.45%. And, you know, there's different data points, different places. But I pull this data from, you know, Statista and some of these other places. But only 0.45%, half of 1%, basically, 4,500 businesses stay in business over five years, makes over seven figures, and actually makes a profit on that seven figures. Like half of 1%. That's crazy. Yeah. That means like it is hard to survive. It is, it's the same chance of, of an individual trying to make it into the NBA, NFL, or to become a pro tennis player. Like not even 1% of businesses fit that three criteria that I just said. Stays in business over five years, makes over, uh, you know, seven figures and makes money on that seven figures. And we've made it there, you know, yeah. but once you make it there though, there's still a lot of challenges. It's just that at this point in our stage, as we continue to focus on certain things and if we plan correctly, the sky becomes the limit because you have more resources. I mean, look at the resources we had three and a half years ago versus like now, like even shooting this Valiant Vine, we did what we had to do. I would personally set up the video and the cameras. Remember like when we first started, we used to mm -hmm. call it the digital dive. Yeah. I would set it up personally. I had the road like set up, get the mics like, the, I mean the set and we had to set it up every time and book a conference room at where we were renting out space 
and it would take me like 30 to 45 minutes to set it up every time. And then I'd fuck up the audio sometimes or like, Don't you know. get me started on how long it took just to get the final product back. <laughs> Our editor. That's, right. So like all that said, look, you're going to start somewhere, but yeah. just always keep in mind, like you can make it to that top 1% or 0.5%. It is going to take you a lot of effort. And my goal is if you're listening to this Valiant Volumes and you're a Valiantpreneur or entrepreneur, our goal is to help you get there. Yeah. So yeah. thank you for for having this conversation mm -hmm. with me. Sure. Thank you to the Valiantpreneurs who are listening. Mm -hmm. If you want to join us as we really start to blow mm -hmm. up our brand, now is the time to join us and be, mm -hmm. uh, be what is it that they say on TikTok? Like I was early, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Our socials are, are bare bones right now, yeah. but we are actively... Mm -hmm. working on going. I mean, yeah. we have so much content of this podcast cut up into short clips mm -hmm. that we just we have sitting on a folder on the computer right now yeah. waiting to to put it out there to the world. Mm -hmm. So if you're listening to this right now and our socials are bare, get ready cuz we're ready to blow that blow this up. Um you can follow us right now. All of our episodes are on YouTube mm -hmm. under the Valiant Digital page, but we have our podcast uh list as Valiant Volumes. Yeah, but you can find us on TikTok, yeah. you'll find us on Meta, Instagram, all those different platforms. Yeah. So like just look up uh Valiant Digital and then Valiant Volumes there. Yep. And um if you do have any thoughts, questions, guests you want us to bring on, I mean, you name it, anything you think we should hear, you can email us at hello at valiantdigital.com, comment on our on our posts and we'll be happy to, you know, answer some of your questions bring mm -hmm. on some of the guests or just go over some of the topics that you're interested in hearing about so yeah good deal thank you so much well that's a wrap yeah Peace. thanks for listening